work on this textural support that I worked with earlier. It's very cool to the touch um, and it's going to probably remain cool to the touch because again it's the paper support around a foam core center. So let's add some paint and I'm not going to be very um, concerned about exactly how I add it. I'm just going to paint. It already has some nat natural texture in the paper itself. It also has some natural texture because I've, I've created in this, this support a dimensionality from the very get-go. So I'm adding some paint and you can see how this te texture is um, beginning to, to show. Add a little, another color. Blend those colors on the paint or painting. You can see how these transparent colors now overlap and inform one another. So I'm just covering the sides. If you're going to create a support, if you're going to work from the sides, if you want, if you're working on a cradle panel, what I often do with the sides before I begin is tape that off so that it's protected and I have the availability to pull off the tape when it's done and then have a clean support. But when I'm working with a paper support, I'm actually incorporating the side as part of my painting. So we've got enough paint on here. And let's come back over here and fuse lightly. When I say fuse lightly, this is a difference. If I'm fusing and I want to fuse something smooth, then I'm going to hold the, the, the heat gun over the surface until it fuses not only between one layer, but it goes down two and three layers. So for this one, fusing lightly means something like this. Holding the fusing gun lightly, maybe using an, a an action of pulling it in and out, and I'm only trying to get it to gloss. So I, all I want to do is to see that the entire surface at some point is glossy, including the sides. So that this would be considered diffused. Now what I would do, let's, if I want to, if I, if I like this texture and I want to enhance it, I can do it in three ways. Number one, I can use oil, oil paint, oil sticks, uh, pigment sticks, and I can fill in all of those textural spaces and that's going to make this even more dramatic. And I'm, at this point I'm going to use um, one of the r &F pigment sticks because I just love them. They are buttery soft and um, it's just a mixture of oil and beeswax. And so let's use a darker, a darker stick in here. All pigment sticks, no matter what brand they are, they go by the name of oil stick, pigment sticks. Um, they always will have a little crust on them. So the first thing that you're going to have to do is to remove that crust. And then I'm going to take a little bit of this pigment stick and I always use gloves for this because we're working with linseed oil and pigment and in the event that I have something in an abrasion in my skin um, I might get some of that linseed oil in my um, I mean yeah some of that oil in my skin and I don't want to do that so I'm going to add some textural pieces in here what I'm trying to do is to work that oil down into the um, crevices and I'm only going to do that on part of the piece. Now if I want, I can lightly smooth this back. You can see how that dimensionality is just really becomes much more interesting and much more dramatic. I can also then, if I wanted to bring back a little bit more light, I could take a little Wesson oil or olive oil. Um, and I've even been known to use salad dressing in a pinch and you just simply lightly take brings back some of the light. So I'm taking off more of the oil stick actually. You can see how that adds a totally different different quality. Now we're getting a total undersea feeling. So I can now what I can do is I can also enhance the top of this. Um, I can use a powdered pigment um, of some sort. Um, I can use um, I can use an um, an oil pastel. So if I'm going to create some marks on here, this is a little bit soft. Let me see if I can pick it up over here. I can create the texture 
I can, I can accentuate the texture this way with an oil stick, oil pastel. Just to create some more interest. This is all, also works really, really well with edges, especially if you want to edge your, create a, um, a darker edge around your piece. And usually the rule of thumb is anytime I put anything, any new media on here, I usually fuse. My objective is just to marry that media with, with what's gone before. So I'm going to fuse lightly. Let it cool down just a tad. Try another technique here. This is called accretion. And it's a way where you can take paint and use the, the bubbled surface that I have up here and actually build it up. So we're going to build it up maybe across one area. To do this, I'm going to need to work with both the support that's cool and the wax is cool. So you notice I'm being a little lackadaisical about this. So I'm going to just lightly run this over horizontal wise over my piece. And just keep it up. So you can see how this is much cooler now. It's actually a dry brush technique. Adding a little bit more pigment, a little bit more lackadaisical waiting. Move it out. And what happens is that this can actually, actually get very, very high. There's some artists that work with this accretion process as much as two and three inches. And I've actually seen a piece of art um, from an artist, Martin Klein, who's, who works um, on the floor and his accretions are actually three, they're talking about three and four feet high. Just nothing but wax. So now I'm going to fuse lightly. After about three passes of the wax, You can see that I've created three dimensions. The deepest dimension is accented by the oil stick. The medium dimension is accented by the color. And then I've picked up some accretions on the top. I can also then add another dimension by adding a little bit of highlighting color. Um, you can use a bronzing powder or any kind of a, a to highlight the top, but just be very careful. The powder is very fine, and um, if you're, this is the point where I might tell, take off my fan and have a totally still room. Dip your finger in, protect it, close it up, and then you're free to take and just touch the top of those. Let me use my finger actually. Just touching the top of this, running your finger lightly on the top, it's going to provide you an additional kind of color, which is an additional um, layer, which again we would fuse. So you can see how I, just using the process of creating texture, I'm already beginning to build up something that's got some possibilities. Mm -hmm.